So this scenario is set up to get us to think about what's happening outside of just the school. I think this is a unique scenario. Um, the very first thing that we're going to do as a campus, right, that's what this is supposed to be dealt with as, is we're going to say that we have made, been made aware of the threats that we have discussed with local with the local police department, and we are confident that the threat does not extend to our area, that we understand, assuming that is true, Right. If the police have said if the police had said that, no, this guy might be moving around at your school, well, then the, the answer will be different. But I'm going to play it both ways. So assuming that the police had said, hey, there's no there's no we have no credible evidence to say he's coming into your your school system. We would say we are we, we we've spoken with the police. We do not believe there is a credible there's a credible threat here, uh, but as an extra precaution buses will start doing the drop-offs at uh, more proximal home locations. Uh, we're going to encourage and give guidance to all of the students that you do not walk to the houses alone, uh, that you would, and if there's an apartment complex, that you will uh, collectively go. We are going to task on these buses, the bus monitors. We will now have two bus monitors for every route. Uh, in this scenario, one of the bus monitors will get off the bus with the students, sort of stand at the top of the route and make sure that the students enter the homes uh, that they're supposed to be entering until this uh, until the threat sort of alleviates itself. We the next what we would do for the students that are walking home is we would encourage them to walk in groups. We will educate the students on the, the importance of safety and understanding your surroundings and recognizing people who aren't who don't know. We also would like to encourage the parents, and I understand this is a different day and age and it's not necessarily like the time in which we grew up, but I would encourage the parents to start networking with the neighbors. It's important to start knowing who your neighbors are. Uh, and in the event that you, when your child is walking home, they, we need to know are there parents that are home during the day to where if a group of students knocked on the door and said, I need help, we need to know where those houses are. Uh, I think a community education would be necessary. And the opposing scenario would be that the police have said, no, there is a very credible, uh, a very credible uh, threat to your school system. Then I think the response is very different. Uh, we would acknowledge that immediately. Uh, so you have to have, and I think the outreach is, is fairly simple. I think you use social media. Uh, if, if I was a principal, it would be one of those day one things where I would tell whatever your homeroom is, I would tell whatever kids at, at like a, a middle school level, this would be very easy. Whatever your social media page of preference is, you go to our campus's social media and you follow us. Uh, and then you make sure that you follow us and get notifications. So that way we're going to pass out information that way. I have zero problem with the school using Snapchat. I think if the kids are there, you can get information to the kids very quickly. Um, I think if that happened, you have to have an immediate, have a fast, fast, fast response. So now it is you have to make sure the bus routes. I would almost say I would communicate with our transportation director immediately that the buses are now dropping kids off at their houses. If it's an apartment, uh, we're going to do it as close to those apartments as we can possibly get. We're going to be with inside the apartment complex, but we're going to absolutely be there. I'm also going to maintain, make sure that we have the bus monitors there as well. Uh, that part of the plan will stay in place. We would communicate this to the parents uh, using Twitter, Facebook, and emails. Uh, we're going to blast it all out all at the same time. This will be sort of a formal uh, document. This will be a formal document in a lot of ways, but it needs to be... Um, a video response as well so it's not just a written dialogue i think video uh, i think video announcements impress upon people that there's an urgency so i think that would need to be done pretty quickly the process for walking home i don't think would change uh, i think the community would already be on somewhat of a heightened alert uh, and i understand in a lot of ways that causes us to put the brakes on each other but i think in this case that would that's the wrong that's the wrong idea I think we need to, in these times, know who our neighbors are and know that when our children are coming home, uh, who they can trust and who they can count on. Um, 
but we need to make sure that that's the plan. You obviously would consult with your superintendent and you're going to consult with the people above you. But I think it's and then that that's the bus route conversation. Um, but as far as like what the campus is doing, you have to communicate that plan effectively to your parents. Uh, you in central office in this case, I don't see those, I, although I am answering the questions, I don't see these. This is clearly one of those instances where central and your superintendent have to be involved. Um, and the communication with the parents have to be explicit, clear, obvious, and promoted through every possible channel you can have. So thank you guys.